Shalom and a warm welcome to this international online midweek service. I'm Simba, joined by my brother, Andrew. Shalom. Shalom, my brother. It's good to be here. It's good to be here indeed. And in a few moments, we'll be joined by the great man of God to carry us on as we are still in the subject of gifts. Now, as we begin, prepare your space, prepare yourself to receive this information delivered to us straight from the corridors of the kingdom of heaven, from mm. the depths of mm. the library of the information stored up for us to become better, more equipped, and the perfect ambassadors perfected for the work of the ministry. Man of God. We've covered a lot of ground. What a time to be alive. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, on Sunday, our father was taking us through an understanding of what it means when the word is coming to you. And we now know that when the word comes, the spirit is coming to you that enables you to perform that word. <laughs> and uh, we're very happy to be here where we're learning more about gifts and having covered so much ground from that basic understanding that God is not gifted <laughs> and we are more gifted than he is. And then taking us further into Jesus, the gift, who is the gift that causes us to become, and finally, the gifts he gives, mm. which causes us to be able to mm. perform. Mm. Yeah. Like you're saying, this, the syllabus was outlined mm. from the very beginning. Um, and in order for us to get into the syllabus, in fact, the outlining of the syllabus, mm. uh, our, our father had to bring the class to attention mm. so that we <laughs> are made to understand yeah. uh, what gifts really are and what it means to be gifted. And what is the proper definition of not being gifted and not having <laughs> a gift? Um, so from Jesus being the gift, mm. the Holy Spirit himself being a gift, and being made to understand the gifts of the Spirit. Um, so, so loving how he prefaced uh, the last interaction we had concerning gifts. How he described how the gifts that the Lord Jesus was using yeah. form of instrumental gifts, mm -hmm. whether they were prophetic uh, teaching, evangelism, pastoral, all of them got to be matured and gained experience as of when Jesus was, was, using, was them. using them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it leaves a lot of questions. Um, are these gifts then personalities? Uh, do they have a temporal lobe where they uh, recall and store memory, memory and information? Yeah. Mm. Um, to, to what extent how do we describe our interaction with those gifts? I mean, there's so much for us to learn in terms of what these gifts are, what they contain. And it's so exciting when you come now and you, you realize that from the definition of gifts, we he didn't start from, from the, the middle of the issue. Yeah. We're, we're getting we're normally... straight into, yeah. Um, Jesus had to be described and the necessity of having Jesus and how... To bluntly put it, the devil has no power of his own. No, all powers of God. And <laughs> all powers of God. Mm. And, and from the root of that understanding, he then began to extrapolate to make us to understand. If you find someone who's exercising spirituality and their gift, their, the gift they're exhibiting has got some prophetic properties, let's, let's call it that. And yet you follow that person and you find that there is no salvation. You realize that what that person has actually done is gone after the instrumental gifts mm. that are away from the person of, of Jesus. The Christ, yes. And so our Father helped us to understand the, 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 the function of Jesus being the gift and the function of the instrumental gift that Jesus, the gift, comes to the personality. Mm -hmm. And then the gift is given to the person to use. Has been gifted with Jesus the gift. And so all that understanding helps to, to frame our understanding now of the kingdom, mm -hmm. our understanding of the world. We no longer get confused when we see uh, people doing acrobatics and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> flying up and down in the air, you know, doing backflips of spiritual gifts. We, we no longer get shocked. <laughs> by that. Yeah. We'll just wait and follow you home. <laughs> oh, to see. Yeah. <laughs> you want to see that. How does this uh, woman, how does this man live? And then 
from there we begin to understand that, no, 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 what kind of seed is this? Is salvation established or is it not established? So look at the light we have. Uh, we cannot be tricked. Speaking of that light, one of the mind-blowing revelations that's come through the series is the idea that the nine gifts of the Spirit that we find uh, listed in Corinthians were not so much uh, an ex- a comprehensive list, yes. but right. it was what was given to the most carnal church and that this God has got much more to offer. So coming from that standpoint, it makes us very excited to hear what our Father is going to say and where he's taking us in terms of understanding further. Mm. So please do gather your family, your friends, anyone that you feel would benefit from being here, anyone that you love, let them come into the place where the voice of God is speaking. Imagine more than nine gifts that are spiritual and more than 200 senses that are, in essence, uh, belonging to the soul. Um, there's so much for us to discover in this kingdom. And, and like I said, what a time to be alive. Um, many men and women of God, prophets, would have loved to be present in this time where they get to sit under the express mind of God, where God has been so liberal in, in showing his love and affection for us and so kindly preparing us and, and arming us, firstly, against the woes that are present in this age, And secondly, for us to supersede and to really manifest as more than the conquerors Mm. that we are. And so please give us a few moments to present the gift that God has given to the earth, our great Father. Greetings, Father. Greetings, pastors. Thank you for having me tonight. Thank you so much, Father. I'm glad to be here. We we are thrilled. I know. And we are blessed. (laughs) Indeed. Indeed, I thank God for tonight and I thank God for you. I thank Him for your lives. And I even thank Him for your presence. And thank you for joining viewers. It's a very profound moment that we find ourselves in tonight. And it is as a result of God having chosen you carefully out of the rest. And He has set you apart based on the purpose and the assignment that he has, be, he has bestowed upon your life. Hence, you needed to be here tonight because what is going to be said here is consistent with your calling and with your assignment. So you are here not only to be fed personally, but you are here so that the assignment that God has given to you gets fed Mm. so you eat at the same time your assignment gets to eat Mm. so you are in the right place tonight since you have overcame a lot of obstacles so many things were supposed to have been done by you in this particular moment but you turned your back on everything so that you can be here. So make sure that you pay attention to what God is saying. Now that we know that words are spirits, it is critical that we start appreciating what gets into us as we get to hear him speak. We learned from the prophet of God who was, before he became a prophet, was a priest. And when God spoke unto him, it so happened that a spirit entered into him as God was speaking. And what God was saying was for him to stand on his feet. Stand on your feet so that I would speak to you. Because he was weak. He was so frail. He was so devastated by a divine experience that he had in chapter 1 of the book of Ezekiel, he could not stand. He had no strength left in his body. 
even be able to hold his body in place. And yet a voice from God came and he said to him, stand on your feet and then I will talk to you. And he gave us a very profound revelation that it happened that when I heard him speak, then a spirit entered into me and made me to stand on my feet. So the spirit that entered him became his ability to stand. Mm. That spirit became his stability. That spirit that entered him is not just a spirit, it has another name, it is called balance. Mm. It made him to balance. So God wanted him to stand on his feet so that he would relay more information which required him to be conscious. So be in your conscious state. So the voice invited him, the voice called him out of a trance. The voice invited him, the voice beckoned him out of a subconscious state. Stand on your feet is a statement. Be aware. Be alert. Then I would tell you things that are not supposed to be told. When somebody has lost consciousness, stand on your feet and I'll speak. So now we know that when God talks to us, spirits enter us. And whether we run, we will run by that spirit. Whether we fly, we fly by that spirit. We stand, we are made to stand by the spirit which was once in word form. So a spirit is about to get into you as you hear him talk. This is an amazing place for you to be. Thank you. This is the most interesting place. You can never be in another place better than this. Mm -hmm. You belong here. Thank you. So tonight as we progress into this very profound subject of the gifts of the Spirit. I'm going to work on something here because as you notice, we are yet to get into the gifts that we thought were the only gifts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we are dealing with several other gifts that we never thought were gifts, himself included, his Spirit included. Mm -hmm. And today I'm going to uh, briefly talk to you concerning what you never thought was a gift, which is presence. Presence. So I will talk concerning the gift of presence. The gift of presence. I know you've heard about it before, but just let me borrow your time today and elaborate on that so that you know what to do with the presence that you get and the presence that you are. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father. There's a lot that we can talk about tonight, but it is not my intention to be here for too long. I will try my level best to make this short so that it helps you remember most of what I'm going to say. When it comes to the gifts of the Spirit, your understanding of those gifts is going to be determined by your understanding of the spirit that gives them. Your understanding of the gifts of the spirit, your comprehension of the gifts of the spirit, 
the extent at which you comprehend, you understand gifts of the Spirit is dependent on your comprehension of the Spirit that gives them. So seek to understand the Spirit. And the more of the Spirit you understand, that understanding is going to translate into your knowing of the gifts that the Spirit gives. Mm. Mm. Don't have a deeper understanding of a gift. While it's you have a shallow understanding of the giver of that gift. Your knowledge of the Spirit has to be superior to the knowledge that you have of the gifts that He gives. Why? Because the giver of those gifts is greater than the gifts that He gives. This is why you noticed that our emphasis was on people receiving the giver of the gifts. Yes, sir. Which is the salvation that is required so that you get born again first before you can make use of the gifts that he gives. And like you said, when he gives himself, it is his person that is given to your personality. And your personality gets modeled according to the person of the Godhead. Your life gets transformed. You are given a style with which to live. You copy him, you start to emulate him, you imitate him character-wise. So he gives himself as a person to your person so that your personality gets influenced by his personality. You start to live according to his personality. So it's a gift. Himself is a gift. Then he gives you gifts to make use of. So, but when it gets to the presence, when it gets to the presence, all the gifts that you'll ever find In the Bible and outside of the Bible, which are the gifts of the Spirit, all of them, all of them, when you begin to investigate, you begin to study them individually, they have certain similarities. There are certain aspects that you find in each gift that are related to each other. And those similarities are emanating from where those gifts emanated from. They all have one source. They have one thing in common which is the Spirit of the Almighty God. Mm. They all came from God. And it is impossible for you to find a person that is gifted. And the gift that he has was not given by God. whether he is born again or not. If the person is not born again, it 
is God that he doesn't have, but he has something of God. He has something from God, though not having God. And what I've come to realize concerning the gifts of God, which are the gifts of the Spirit, is that all of them, as we receive them here, the gifts of the Spirit are simply fractions of the attributes of God. Each gift that you receive from God, what you have received from God, is a fraction of His attributes. A gift of the Spirit is a fraction of the attribute of the Spirit. And by the attributes of God, you must understand the attributes of God are not necessarily the, just the character of God or the behavior of God. Mm -hmm. The attribute of a thing is the thing there are certain attributes that you are. And they are not attributes that you have. It's an attribute that you are. Get to understand that in trying to understand the giver of the gift. Since I've told you, it is important that you develop, you improve in your understanding of the Spirit more than in your understanding of the gifts of the Spirit. Your understanding of the gift will be determined, decided by your understanding of the Spirit that gives the gift. Thank you, sir. So your knowledge of the Spirit has to be superior to your knowledge of what he gives. Thank you. Because whatever it is that you're going to understand about the gift, you will have to understand the gift from the spirit that you have understood. Okay. You will look at the gift from the standpoint of the spirit. Mm. So please seek to know him more than you get to know what he gives. Know him more. So follow this. By the attributes of God, God is omnipotent. That's an attribute. Mm -hmm. And that attribute entails that the power he has is limitless. Mm -hmm. And it is not only the power that he has. When you study the omnipotence of God, mm -hmm. you get to a point where you realize that it is also the power that he is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Therefore, attribute. So it's not power that he is in possession of. It is power that he is. So that it doesn't become the attribute that he has, mm -hmm. All right. but rather the attribute that he is. I'm following that. It is important because this is going to help you appreciate what else it is that you receive apart from him. Mm the it, mm -hmm. the power. Yes. So that it's not just a 
he that you that you receive there is an it to the he mm-hmm. wow so that after receiving him mm-hmm. you don't seek for the power all right the it okay that accompanies the him all right when he gets to you wow the power he has yes has no boundaries this is why a child of god is not supposed to fear demons mm. it is wrong for you in the kingdom of god it is uncultural <laughs> it is uncalled for you should never at any time at any point in any place fear an evil spirit don't be afraid of demons don't fear what the devil is going to do to you many reasons why you should not fear an evil spirit because you are not supposed to fear what is afraid of you <laughs> thank you for mm. thank you for there is so much that is extremely mysterious about you the demons up until today they wonder and they don't understand this is why even some writers had, had to investigate really what is man you that are. you are mindful <laughs> of and you go as far as visiting him ah. leaving the presence of angelic beings and it is men that you visit and you enjoy companionship with men away from angels seraphims cherubs heavenly creatures he escapes all that just to spend time with men hence there is a wondering what is man that you're so mindful being mindful it means it was a discovery that the writer did okay where he found that in the mind of god it was just men <laughs> that god was thinking of his mind was full of men yes wow. yes yes what is man that thou It's art right. mindful of him it's all right <laughs> ah, don't be afraid of what fears you. Don't worry about the devil, he's worried about you. Don't be concerned about him, he's really concerned about you. He's he's worried about your next move. He never thought you'd be here today having thrown everything at you. You're still here today standing. Mm-hmm. That's the mis- mysterious part of you that he doesn't seem to get. The support the backup that you have that is spiritual to him it is so profound. He's been trying to deal with that ever since even before you were born. Before your father met your mother Yet today you're here you can't be here then to fear <laughs> what is afraid of you so follow me yes when we talk about the attributes of god i'm saying it's a fraction it's a fraction when you receive a gift of the prophetic mm-hmm. the gift of the prophetic is a fraction of the attribute of god called the omniscience of god. Mm-hmm. thank you. Thank you for. 
The omniscience of God is the knowing, not only the knowing of everything that God has, but it is the knowing of everything that God is. <laughs> the, the omniscience of God is the attribute of God, but it is not only the attribute that God has. Yes. It is yes. an attribute that God is. Yes. Again, it is important so that you know that when you receive God, you have also received an attribute that He is. So you know who He is, mm -hmm. you also know what He is. Wow. Mm -hmm. So by that gift of the prophetic, you get to know, this is why I've decided to call it a fraction of the omniscience mm -hmm. of God. Yes, sir. By being omniscient, it means he knows every single thing. Yes, yes. And when you get a fraction of that, by fraction, it means it is a tiny portion mm -hmm. of the whole. Yes, yes. And it being in part, when you get that, with that, you prophesy in part. <laughs> yes, Father. When you get a fraction of an ability that God is, which is in the area of knowing everything, mm. that being a part, it means you are given a fraction. Mm. And by that fraction, you know mm. in fractions. Wow. For we know in part and we prophesy. In part. part. So you see the knowing is in part. Yes. Followed by the prophesying, yes. which is also in, in part. part. Why having those two together? Mm -hmm. If the prophetic is not the knowing, mm -hmm. if the prophetic is not the omniscience, mm -hmm. the omnipresence of God, God is omnipresent. Omnipresent mm -hmm. means present everywhere. Being present everywhere. We are getting to talk about the gift of presence yes. now. And that being an attribute of God, it's not just an attribute that you that God has, it is an attribute that God is. is. Okay. And when you are given a fraction of that, it means you carry an ability mm -hmm. to be present. Mm. Not in every place since it is a fraction. Mm but in multiple places, places. Wow. at the same time. Mm. So the demonstration of that attribute, when you get it from God, mm. knowing that the attribute is from God and also the attribute is God, mm -hmm. and having it in fractions, yes. you are entitled also to being mm -hmm. in two places, at the same time. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to being omnipresent, he beats you. Okay. All right. Okay. Yes. Because of places that he is able to cover mm -hmm. at the same time. In places that you are able to cover at the same time. Yours being a portion of that omnipresence ability it means you can only be present in certain places at the same time and be absent in other places. But you'll notice that as you grow in that nature, as you grow in that attribute, you get to a point where even in places where you are absent, your absence becomes your presence. That is... <laughs> That is when you have an understanding of that attribute and how that attribute is developed. Okay. So that you know that even in places where God is, 
there is also the absence of God. Explain that, Father. So that you, you remember, you have an ability to dream. Yes, Father. And whilst you are dreaming, it is a hundred miles away mm -hmm. from your body mm -hmm. where the dream is occurring. Mm -hmm. And where you find yourself at yes, sir. is where you are currently situated and located. You are there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is not an activity hundred miles away. A meeting, its occurrence mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. Yet there are instances where that can happen. But in this case, you, you have actually visited mm -hmm. that specific location. You are there. Mm. Yet at the same time, you are here. And I've told you of the, that stretch of the spirit. Yes. And I called it the what? Terrestrial radiation. Yes, terrestrial radiation and the elasticity of the spirit. <laughs> How far you can have your spirit man stretched. And from here to that place hundred miles away, since it is a stretch, mm -hmm. it means you also have your presence in between. Uh, okay. <laughs> and that activity in between is a practice of omnipresence. Mm. Thank you, Father. You are there, 100 miles away, and you are sleeping over here. Maybe it's in a hotel or you're in your, your bedroom. Mm -hmm. The reason why doctors cannot confirm you dead here, while you are also dreaming, being away 100 miles away, it means yes. there is that elasticity of the spirit man. So life is still maintained over here. There is still your heartbeat. Yes. You still have your pulse, mm -hmm. which is proof of the presence of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Yet at the same time, mm -hmm. you are in a different location. Yes. What is happening there, even if you can be in two places at the same time, it's a demonstration of the attribute of God called the omnipresence. Mm. Father, can I just slide in a question? Yeah. How, if I am remembering being somewhere, can that also be described as elasticity? For example, if I'm having a memory mm -hmm. of being in another location, mm -hmm. maybe I'm thinking about my wife. Mm -hmm. am I, uh, have I traveled there to be with her? Or I'm thinking about my children. Is that also an aspect of that elasticity? It's a practice of, of, the, of the omnipresence of God. But you see now, what is difficult for you is to think of your wife, where she is, and at the same time, be thinking of an assignment that you have, whether you have switched uh, off your computer, you, you have then to, mag, to move, stop thinking about your wife, and then you have to start to think concerning your homework because of your inability to handle both at the same time. Mm. So that's a migration of the spirit that is happening, though we call it memory. Mm. Ah. But you notice that it's, it's a distribution of yourself. It's, a, it's an actual visitation mm. that is taking place. Thank you, Father. Mm -hmm. But the, the difference now is in your inability to be active okay. there okay. Okay, yes. and to be felt okay. there and to make contributions mm -hmm. and to speak 
in a manner that can then be understood so that your wife knows that you are here mm. Mm. yes sir <laughs> Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. Why because again of your omnipotence. Okay. That is in form of a fraction. fraction. Okay. Mm. So you have power that is limited. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, what we're following. So you can't get even the people there to feel your presence in terms of power. Mm. Because you are visiting them. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. using a fraction of omnipresence <laughs> so you're not fully there that's profound number two, mm. the power that you carry yes. it's a fraction of the omnipresence mm. so you cannot be fully felt, felt. okay follow this because yes, well. whatever you are doing with these attributes mm. yes it's in part mm. any gift you can think of yes so what i'm saying when we talk about the presence the gift of presence how god does it you see your your understanding the more limited you are in terms of your understanding mm the more certified you are as a human that's the, the, that's the, if you want to know whether <laughs> you are really human that is based on the little that you know concerning yourself the more about yourself that you begin to know yes the more godly you become that no more knowledge of yourself yes entitles you to godliness you escape humanity when you get to know more concerning your being ah yeah yeah thank you there is superior intelligence knowing comes in different levels it comes in different measurements there is an extreme level of comprehension which when you get to that you would have crossed a line that demarcates humanity and divinity you are made to cross that line yes and you find yourself into uncharted regions and you look around creation that you see there are beyond humans mm. Mm. comprehension at that level understanding at that level will become proof that you have transcended your knowledge of your awareness not just being aware your knowledge your knowledge of your awareness your knowledge of your awareness even your awareness of your knowledge <laughs> being aware of what you know the knowledge that you begin to accumulate where you are being told by the spirit exactly what you are mm. your capabilities are laid bare by the spirit mm-hmm. and you see that i'm not humans are not like this if this is what constitutes me yes if these are the elements mm. yes if this is my material if this is the fiber that i am mm. yes and there is nothing human about me mm. Mm. and suddenly your your comprehension of yourself escalates and then your awareness is enhanced mm. your awareness mm. is enhanced mm. you are aware of yourself mm. you know yourself beyond knowing 
and you are not ashamed to let people know what has happened to you. That's when Jesus declares that the Spirit of the Lord is upon, upon me. He has anointed <laughs> me. He knows what has happened to him. So please follow this. The omnipotence of God means that God is all powerful. Mm -hmm. And his power is limitless. There is nothing that God cannot do. Yet, he is not doing everything. <laughs> That's profound. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The omniscience of God means that God is all-knowing. By all-knowing, He is knowing everything. Yet He is not knowing everything. Though He knows everything, but He is not knowing everything. Help us there. He is, know, he is not knowing it. Actively. Yet He knows it. Okay. Help. He knows it. But he's not busy knowing it. He's not oh. concentrating on what he knows. Okay, 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 okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It's clear. Father, am, am I allowed to just try my hand and see if, if I've understood? Try. Could we... I'm, I'm trying to understand what you've just said. Could we say that it? we can describe it as saying the Lord has a subconscious mind and a conscious mind. And he has full and comprehensive access to all that is within the conscious mind. Correct. And he brings at will whatever he'd like to know. And he's from, in charge from, from the subconscious, subconscious to the conscious. To the four. Yes. Mind, to the conscious mind. Correct. Okay. Correct. Correct. So when you say... But, but when that mm -hmm. happens to you... Yes. That same scenario that you've presented, if that is to happen to you, you would assume that you lack in your omni, omniscience. Because <laughs> you want to be knowing everything. All the time. Right now. Right, right now, <laughs> at the same time. But when what is known takes turns wow. to be known, yes. you see that as an omniscience challenge. Sure. Yet even with God, mm -hmm. follow this. Yes. Follow Yet even with God, He knows everything. Yet He is not knowing everything. So He chooses what He would want to focus. Why would okay? Mm -hmm. Why would God say, having arrived <laughs> from the heavens? Yes. He gets to Abraham and he tells him what I've had concerning the city of Sodom. Mm. I have come mm. to find out whether that is true <laughs> or not. <laughs> so just, that, that, that is just an example. example. Yes, yeah. well. <laughs> In case you're trying to exercise your omniscience, and you find yourself lacking. Mm. Because what you're trying to do is trying to know everything yes. that you know. Yes, mm. sir. You're going to be defeated because what is known must have its turn to be known. Mm. All right. You have things that you, you know a lot yes. in your subconscious mind. Yes. Yet you are knowing little in your conscious mind. So if it is a mathematical answer that you need to put on a piece of paper, it is that mathematical answer that has to arise from the subconscious. All right. Probably every other geographical answer has to remain in your subconscious mm, state. Thank you, Father. Being known Being there. Known there. It is so clear. Ah, yeah. It is so clear. Being known there. 
think. So you become om- omniscient in your subconscious mm. mind and limited in your conscious mind. All right. All right. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes, following. So, so I'm I'm explaining the omniscience of God, mm-hmm. yes, which is the all-knowing power that he has, number one, the all-knowing power that, that he is. that he is the omnipotence of God. So, when we talk about the omnipresence yes. of God, which is the gift that I'm here to explain, the omnipresence attribute of God that God number one has or that God is. Yes. Then how do you really what really are you saying when you say that God is present here? Having known him to be everywhere, yes, at the same time. Mm-hmm. That omnipresence, nature, omnipresence, character, mm-hmm. omnipresence, um, ability mm-hmm. of God. Yes having had a full comprehension of that ability how come we are found here and there mm-hmm. saying that the presence of god is here mm-hmm. yet we've just said by saying that he is omnipresent he's everywhere yes mm-hmm. yes we have said that god is everywhere and yet we say he's here mm-hmm. Where is he not? What is so special about the presence of God? Since we've already established that he is everywhere. Mm-hmm. You'll notice that again in his omnipresence. Mm-hmm. You might discover limitations. Okay. Because if God is everywhere, mm-hmm all at the same time it means he is in everything yes so if he is in everything by everything i mean everything and i mean mm-hmm. everywhere and i mean in everyone mm-hmm. in everybody yes Yes. Mm. If there is a non-believer in whom God is not, then God cannot be omnipresent. Mm. Mm-hmm. For him to be omnipresent, yes. it means he is supposed to be everywhere, in every place, in everything, in everyone. Yes. But how come in that somebody there isn't salvation? Mm. Mm. He is not born again, mm. yet he has God in him. Mm. Yes. So we have then to explain yes. the gift of presence. Thank you. When the presence becomes a gift. Mm. Mm. Where God is, yes. and he is not a gift, and where god is and he is a gift mm. help us there father remember you said lord come into me yes mm-hmm. i receive you mm-hmm. where was he before that if he was an omnipresent god so what are you saying wow. <laughs> so let me help you articulate that let me help you understand that so that you eventually get to know how also to manifest your presence in places as a gift mm. so that you also get to know what your presence can do mm. to other people around you thank you thank you and to things around you thank you so much ah so what is it about the presence that makes it a gift and i'm calling it the gift of presence the gift of presence the gift of presence you know i got so intrigued when i read a passage of scripture 
after Jesus would have separated the sheep from the gods. And he turns to his right side, his right hand, and he looks at the sheep and he says, Blessed are you of my father. And he says, I would want you now to enter into the kingdom that was prepared for you from the beginning, from the foundations of the earth. There was a kingdom already prepared for you, which you had no access into. Now it's time for you to enter. Mm -hmm. Then he said, because I was hungry, you fed mm -hmm. me. I was thirsty mm -hmm. and you gave me drink. I was naked and you clothed me. Follow this, follow this, follow this. Yes, sir. I'm not really concerned about all of this mm. because in hunger, it was food you gave. In thirsty, it was drink you gave. In nakedness, it was clothes you gave. Mm. So in all of those aspects, when you found me hungry, mm -hmm. you gave me a gift called food. Mm -hmm. You did not give your flesh to me to eat. It wasn't yourselves that you gave. Mm -hmm. When I was thirsty, it wasn't you that I drank. Mm -hmm. You gave me water. You gave me a drink. Mm -hmm. You went out and you got a gift mm -hmm. and you gave me the gift that sustained me. But then the list keeps on going. That's where it gets more interesting. Mm -hmm. And he says, I was sick and you visited me. There's a visitation. Mm -hmm. And he went on to say, I was in prison and you came to me. Mm -hmm. What does he say? In every other aspect, you were giving me gifts. Yes. Ah, yes. Yes. But it got to a point where even when I was sick. Now, what is he saying? Because he's not saying when I was in prison, <laughs> you visited me for the sake of delivering me. Mm -hmm. No. It was <laughs> simply a visitation that he's appreciating. Mm -hmm. So it goes to show that the visitation is some kind of release mm -hmm. to the prisoner. Mm. though he remains there. Mm. I was sick and you came to me. He did not say that when you came, you brought me food. No. Mm. He's not saying when you came, you brought me medication. No. Mm -hmm. But you became the medication. Wow. It was your visit mm. that became what I desired. Mm. I was... I re I re covered quicker, oh. not based on medical treatment. Mm -hmm. mm. I recovered. I was resuscitated by presence. Mm. Presence. This is why now when you find yourself present in the life of somebody, do you know the number of people that you have helped? Mm. You visited them and you left them there. And yet, the atmosphere that you left was different from the previous atmosphere that you found. Wow. Mm. And sometimes you might wonder, so what exactly did I say to help this person. Mm. There was no need for you to say, if you have fully worked on your presence, mm. if you have developed your presence well, it is not what you say when you arrive. Because your presence in that place becomes the presence of what was said by God. You are a product of a statement by God. <laughs> if you know that you were spoken by God into being, mm -hmm. you are what God said. 
Hmm. Having full knowledge of that, you get to places where sometimes you don't need to comfort people and yet people are comforted. Wow. It is not based on what you are saying because you are what God said. Wow. Hope comes even when you don't speak it because you are it. Mm. <laughs> Ah. Father, I'm marveling <laughs> at just the how interwoven and how well connected and well structured it all is. Because at the beginning, you took us to that understanding of the spirit of balance, mm-hmm. that it came as a word, and but the, by the time it arrived, it became that balance. <laughs> and now you are presenting us as what God has spoken. Mm-hmm. And by the time that we visit the people, it's no longer a word that they're waiting for, mm-hmm. but our arrival becomes that statement that was spoken by God. It's amazing, Father. Why would you be present? You feature, you appear. You've, you've, you've seen that in, you are in a place and 200 feet away, there is somebody who is just looking at you and smiling. Mm-hmm. You are seated, they are seated. Mm-hmm. What do you think is going through their mind? Mm. Do not underestimate the gift of presence. Mm-hmm. He looked up Jesus over Jerusalem and he wept. Because mm-hmm. what they had failed to comprehend and to evaluate mm-hmm. was simply a visitation. Mm-hmm. This goes to show that presence is a gift. You must have mastery mm-hmm. over receiving presence. Thank you. Presence. The only presence ness of God. God who is everywhere. So if I'm if I'm the one saying to you that God is here. That is the presence of God is here. If you were to ask me, so what do you mean that God is here? You're the same guy who has just told me that he is everywhere. But I've I've heard you say that God is everywhere. I've heard you say that God is omnipresent. Mm -hmm. But now you're saying that there's the presence of God here. What do you mean? If you were to ask me such a question, I hope you're asking me such a question. And thank you for asking. (laughs) When When I say that God is here, this is how I would describe Mm. the presence of God to you. Mm. So that by understanding his presence, people also around you must get also to understand your presence. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Father. (laughs) When you have worked on your presence Mm. Mm -hmm. over time, (laughs) pastors, there is there is what your presence will begin to do mm. when it is present. Mm. Mm-hmm. Your presence has an ability to subjugate other presence. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. You 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 take over regions. Mm. You influence, you you penetrate territories Mm. by presence. Mm. Mm. Your atmosphere becomes a partaker of your attribute, of your being. Mm. And you cause men that were known to be battlers and bakers to become dreamers. Hmm. All right. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Dreaming was never their expertise. Hmm. Yes. They were not proficient in terms of their ability to dream. Hmm. The guy is a baker. 
That's his occupation. He's a butler. That's his occupation, not, not a qualified dream. Mm -hmm. But here comes the presence. <laughs> a well-established presence, in, a, an individual who is known for dreaming. He's seasoned. Mm, yes. He's a seasoned dreamer. Yes. And suddenly, <sighs> butlers are dreaming. And we never got to hear of any other dream <laughs> before <laughs> and even after. after. <laughs> but his influence is supposed to keep on growing. Mm -hmm. Wow. Joseph should find ways of improving his presence so that his presence gets to what? To the palace. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So that a king yeah. who is just a mere politician. <laughs> can also have access to dreams. Mm. But that atmosphere, we must be able to track it down mm. yeah. to an individual who has mastered, who has developed it, who has become it. Mm. And at that point, you have now become so powerful that you can infest your immediate climate with your several abilities. Hey. Mm. And people around you are found thinking of things that they would have never thought of mm -hmm. had you not been present. Yeah. Do, you, do you know you have, you have people that you have given business ideas, mm. ideas that you, <laughs> you have never thought of, <laughs> but they were part of your subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. You cannot remember of ever giving that your brother mm. an idea because mm. it was never in your conscious mind. Mm. But having it in your subconscious mind, you had it. And these ideas can be emitted. Mm. Do you know that there is somebody who is successful today simply because he sat with you in the same class? Mm. And he borrowed an idea from you that you cannot remember because it was never in your conscious mind. Mm -hmm. You raided that atmosphere and you influenced mm -hmm. and your ability to dream took over that prison atmosphere mm -hmm. and caused the prisoners to dream. It was not... Now, the Bible says everything that happened in prison was Joseph's doing. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Scripture is specific. Mm. Everything, mm. it was his doing. Mm. Yes. Mm. Including the dream, mm. it was Joseph's doing. Because mm. now there was the gift. <laughs> May the Lord help you. Thank you, Father. He, he knew himself to be a gift, so he was conscious of his presence mm. in any place that he walks into. So I'm, I'm trying to raise your awareness. I'm trying to stimulate your consciousness, mm. being aware of your being. Mm knowing what you are and not only who you are so that you know when things begin to happen around you, you take credit. You are responsible of the events that will begin to unfold in your environment. It is your doing The healings happening around you becomes your doing. And the afflictions, the diseases around you becomes your doing. You can make your atmosphere sick or you can heal mm. Mm. your atmosphere. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison 
and whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. Whatsoever they? Whatsoever they did. They, mm. he, he was the doer. As they were doing, it was him. I, 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 cannot, you, I cannot believe this is in script. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so shocked. But I, I'm dumbfounded. Again, because God had given him, there was an invitation to leadership that was put in Joseph. Mm. You see that when the prisoner, when, when the prison keeper mm. hands over his responsibility to a convict. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't happen, brother. Oh. <laughs> For what? No, no, no. To do what? <laughs> That's a risk. Because <laughs> the, the leader has arrived. Mm. Mm. And people that thought were responsible for that territory, they handed it over to Joseph. Voluntarily. Understand the gift of presence. Mm. What it does, decisions that you'll see people making around you. Based on the effectiveness of your presence. Mm. Mm. Yes, in terms of feeling, you might feel like you are not that powerful. Mm. And the feeling doesn't entail that you are not that powerful. It is the limited understanding that you have of the power that you carry. Sure. Mm. Little understanding of too much power. Mm. Oh. Your little understanding that you have of the power that is too much that you carry. It makes you feel vulnerable. That little knowledge is what weakens you. Mm. 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 It is little knowledge of great power that you carry, that weakens you. Mm. 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 How come God is convinced that he is everywhere? Yet he visits places. Mm. Being omnipresent yeah. and he goes there to verify, mm. yet he is omniscient. So it's a conviction that he carries about the power that he has mm -hmm. that enables him to function at that higher level. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that okay? Let me let me let me put it to you this way. If we say <laughs> if we say God is everywhere, yes, sir. we are saying there is. Um, situation A. Yes. Situation B. Yes. Situation C. Yes. Or territory A. Mm -hmm. Territory B. Mm -hmm. Territory C. Yes. Or location A. Mm -hmm. Location B. Mm -hmm. Location C. Yes. Or individual A. Mm -hmm. Individual B. Mm -hmm. Individual C. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, God being omnipresent must be yes. by that attribute mm -hmm. in every aspect. Yes. Every being. Yes. Every region. Yes. Every territory. Yes. By that attribute, we ought to find him mm -hmm. in all of these three places. Yes. All at the same time. time right. Yes. Now, But then, when I come and I tell you that there is the presence of God in situation B. Yes. What am I saying? You will notice that the presence that I'm referring to, that we find in situation B, which is the presence of God, is different from the presence of God that you find in situation A. Yes. And in situation C. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. 
God is in situation C. God is also in situation A. Yes. But here comes a, a proclamation, an announcement mm -hmm. that the, the presence of God is here. Mm -hmm. what, what are we seeing happening here mm -hmm. that serves as a confirmation mm -hmm. of the presence of God? Mm -hmm. Yet he is everywhere. You will notice that if the presence of God is in situation B, mm -hmm. <laughs> a 16 year old boy who is asthmatic will have to jump from situation A, from territory A, mm -hmm. into the pool of Bethesda, mm -hmm. a territory B, mm -hmm. and he recovers from an asthmatic attack. Mm -hmm. Having come from a place where there is God, Mm -hmm. yet he never recovered. The presence of God in situation A could not deal with his condition. Hence, there was need for him to move from a place where there was lesser presence of God. So he's coming from God into God. So you have people converging from D, from B, from C, D, E, F, G, from Z, Z to come into situation B. B. Mm -hmm. And wherever these people are coming from, God is there because he's omnipresent. Yes, yes. So what goes to show the presence of God in area B, mm -hmm is the effectiveness of that presence. Okay, Father. Though he's in other places, he's not doing anything there. All right, Father. He chooses a place where he says, I will give you my presence in area B, mm -hmm. and it is in area B where my presence becomes active. So it is the activity yes. in area B mm -hmm. that entails the presence of God. You know God is in area B. Not because he is absent in area A, but because he is active. So when we say the presence of God is here, we are saying the action okay. of God is here. Oh. This is where God is doing, not only present. Hmm. Come to a place where you see a synergy. It's a combination of the omnipresence nature or attribute of God My way. and the omnipotence attribute of God. Mm. So you come because he's present and you also come because he's active. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so where attributes of God concentrate, ah, yeah, yeah. you see things happening. Okay. All right. God is present yes. when people are dying. Yes. And God is present when people are recovering from diseases. Mm -hmm. What is happening? There are places that he chooses where he allows his presence to be announced mm -hmm. by certain activities and certain occurrences. Wow. And you know he's here. Wow. All right. So. Thank you, Father. Mm. So, then ask a question. How come when I came here, I recovered? Right. 
But I came from home mm -hmm. where God is. Probably with God. <laughs> <laughs> How do you explain that? <laughs> when his presence becomes concentrated mm -hmm. in a place, and it starts influencing that atmosphere. Mm -hmm. It's a presence of God that he allows his creation to feel. Everywhere else, he's present. Mm -hmm. But the measure of presence yes. there will not allow creation to feel the presence of the creator. Mm -hmm. All right. But he gets into certain regions and, and the, his presence becomes so thick. Mm. He allows, okay, why is it that God would come? God who is present everywhere. He would come upon and he sits upon a mountain. Mm. Yes. And it starts smoking. Yeah. Mm. Yet he is in every mountain mm. being <laughs> omnipresent. Yes. What is that? Mm. The smoke that you see coming out <laughs> the mist mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is the agony of the mountain. Mm. It is the reaction, the nature's inability to contain the creator, the concentration of the being of God in a place. That's the same thing that you also see. Okay, we're talking of thousands of mountains and he chooses one. one. Yes. And then you see an unusual activity. People are calling it the glory mm. of God when they see the, the smoke. Smoking. Yet it is the suffering it of the mountain. Of the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> it cannot hold. That is why we end up struggling in as much as we have received of his fullness. But our inability to accommodate all of his attributes in their totality. Yes, man is what limits us. Ay, ay, ay. All right. It's so making sense, brother. You see? Yes. So working on ourselves and extending our character borders. Character. Enlarging ourselves so that we can accommodate more of his attributes. Mm-hmm. You increase in that. Okay. I understand God will always be God. He will always be bigger. He will always be superior. But hear me. Hear me. There's something that you can do to yourself mm. so that you can be capacitated. You can accommodate more. Yeah, we want that. Of God. We want thank you. In terms of your output. We want thank you. Having received all of Him, but it is not all of him that you can discharge. Mm. Mm -hmm. How much of him you can discharge is dependent on your ability. Mm. Your ability. Mm. There is an ability required by a child of God. Mm. This, this, I know this gift is, so, is, is strange. Mm. Sure, it is. You have to work on yourself. Mm. And you look forward to becoming a gift which is in form of presence so that when you are given to the community, yes. they now have you as a gift and the community is considered gifted hmm. by having you. Wow, hmm. okay. Because they now have the presence of you, they become gifted. Mm -hmm you become the immunity mm. of the community. Mm. Mm. The city will not be hit by certain calamities mm -hmm. based on your presence. And I gave it to you when I presented the case of Lot. Yes. Lord. yes. Lot chose one of the cities mm -hmm. that had been targeted by God. Yes. And he said, let me go to that little city. Mm. Is it not a little city? Let me go there. It's, it was little. Mm. Maybe 10,000 people. And the angel said, I will spare. 
Mm. They said mm. it means it was on the list. Yes. Scheduled for demolition. You see now? Yes. For demolition exactly. But because it was Lot who reigned in that city. Uh, fire would not then be allowed to reign. Uh, uh, where Lot had reigned. He went in there <laughs> and he became their immunity mm. against the judgment of God. Wow. Not because there was no <laughs> homosexuality mm. happening there. Mm. But it was because now Lot had visited mm, mm. the little city. Mm, mm. And he said, I'll spare it. It means 10,000 people were spared. Mm, mm. Because one man mm -hmm. had come mm. and he introduced his gift of presence in that city. Of course, someone might wonder, but how come Lot could not save Sodom? Mm. And he goes to the little city. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> His ability was little mm. <laughs> to save the little city. <laughs> All right. Little ability for a little city. It was the little ability, little immunity. The injection was so small. Yeah. The medication was minor. Yeah, yeah. So he had no capacity to save the bigger city. Mm. That's why they had to remove him from Sodom. But he chose a little city and with his little ability, he was able to save the little city. Mm. Mm -hmm. Had he developed himself well, yes. God was not really supposed to find 10 people to spare the city. God was not really supposed to find 20. God was not really supposed to find 50. Had he found 50 in one, Hey. Had he found 10 in one, mm. still he would have spared the city. Developing your presence yes. into becoming multiple mm. Mm. so that you become multifunctional. You mean a lot uh. to people. Yes. Yes. To a point where losing you will mean losing everything. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. So pastors and viewers, <laughs> I really want people to digest this. We have to go over this message over and over and over again until you become it. The development of yourself becomes key. You see, when you're, tr when you're working on yourself into becoming more present, like ex the example that I've just given you, you, you never thought that your presence would mean much to a prisoner mm. until they then asked the king, when did we meet you hungry? When, when, when did we visit you when you were sick? When did we, you, you mean you were, you were, you were once arrested? <laughs> yes. What was the king saying? The king was trying to remind them of his omnipresence nature mm. that even in every criminal, mm. I'm present. Mm. Wow. When Hitler killed millions of Jews, God was in him, mm. but not stopping him. Mm. Hey. So, so, so you think that you are weak because you can't be doing much in too many places. You are only limited to one, like you said. You are thinking of your child. You are thinking of your wife at home. Mm -hmm. Even if you were to see something terrible which is about to happen to your son while she is away, your capacity to stop him, 
then we'll be we'll, then we'll be we'll, at that point we'll be talking of serious gifts now mm-hmm. <laughs> it's beyond knowing yes man it's beyond sight what can you do mm-hmm. to either disallow or allow what you have seen your ability from here to influence your son so that he takes a different direction mm-hmm. from where he was going mm-hmm. that becomes an unusual gift mm-hmm. when we get to that time that point I will be talking and 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 you will be hearing that you will be becoming thank you father it's it's, it's it's these are st- very strange dimensions thank you father but today I'm just working on presence improve yourself so that you become more present in a place and your presence will determine activities that are going to happen around you people are not the same as you see one mountain it's only one mountain that is smoking Yeah. So when you start to look for God you look for that activity. The cloud comes and it sits only on one. Then you know God is in section B. These are things that you look for in a place, in a ministry, in a church. Are you seeing the activity that proves that he is omnipotent so when i get the fraction of the omniscience of god the power to know from god which is god and it's in fraction form i have access into your life mm. and what i see about you is not everything because mm. i did not receive the omniscience of god in its totality because mm. i got it in bits and pieces i get to see your life in bits and pieces pieces so you are allowed as a prophet to let the people know that it's not everything that you see Mm. and it's not a sign that you are weak because mm. god who is everywhere is not doing everything everywhere mm. <laughs> yes sir. until you get to point b mm. 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 he sees you coming from where he is mm. to where he is mm. and he heals you here he doesn't consider himself weak over the mm. hey. yet you consider yourself weak mm. because you can see your son at home who is about to pick a knife mm. and is running around with a knife as much as you can see that with a fraction of the omniscience of god that you got that you are calling a gift but what can you do with the fraction of the omnipotence to stop him yes mm. Mm. so you might have developed yourself only in one aspect of the attribute wow. but your inability now to influence your son to get to the kitchen and you let the maid know mm-hmm. to give her a feeling To, for her to then start to wonder where is the sun right mm. right at the time when it's about to happen mm. that the development of that attribute mm. becomes the development of another gift wow. okay wow. okay see them as attributes of god all of those gifts oh, wow. child of god mm. are pieces of god mm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much Rob. <laughs> how how valuable are you? Mm. 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 Do you know that when Hannah was weeping because Penina had children, Hannah was barren. Mm. 
she needed a child. And do you know what Elkanah said? Elkanah said to Hannah, Am I not better than ten sons? Yes. Am I, what he's saying is, am I not more valuable mm-hmm. than ten sons? So according to his understanding of his value, Elkanah, mm-hmm. he had an understanding of his value, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is something that you need to work on. Mm-hmm. In understanding of your value, he's saying, you need to bring ten sons together to get to my value. Yes. That is Elkanah's understanding of his value. Mm-hmm. So if I'm if I were Hannah, I would then later on come back and reevaluate my husband. In as much as you had an understanding of your value back then that you are worth ten, ten sons. Yeah. Well, it depends with the <laughs> sons that you <laughs> that you're referring to. If I give you a Samuel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. <laughs> you will understand that there is a difference in value. Mm. It depends with the sons that you are referring to. If they are useless sons, yes, you need 10 to get to your value. But when Samuel came, I think it was proof to Elkanah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That there are certain sons that you don't, you don't need a lot of them. Mm-hmm to outweigh your value. Samuel was more valuable. Yes. He did a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what the mother did was to hand over Samuel into the arena of God. So Samuel had to be given as a present. Yes. Mm. So his presence <laughs> became a gift. Yes. <laughs> yes. Wow. <Well. laughs> I've told you this before. Doctors can confirm what I'm telling you. Usually when you are sick in hospital and you don't have visitors, relatives visiting you, you are most likely never going to recover. Even if you do. The recovery is very slow. Unlike somebody who is having people coming to see him. What are they bringing? It's not medication because they are the medication. The energy they bring, Mm -hmm. the love, the passion that they bring Mm. is a very uh, important ingredient to the recovery of the sick. Mm. How you have... you. You have developed yourself into becoming. Don't don't be a misery to people. It's a terrible thing knowing that somebody right now is going through depression simply because you 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 showed yourself up. Simply because you showed up. Why should that be? Become a representation of joy, of hope. Become an assurance. When you arrive, they don't feel condemned. They feel forgiven. How do they know they have just been forgiven? Because you have come. You are there. Your presence is a gift. So begin to work on these Attributes. Thank you. Yes, Thank, you. Thank you. Because these attributes are not only the attributes that God has, these are attributes that God is. Mm. Like water. Mm. Water is wet. Mm-hmm. But water doesn't have an attribute of wet. All right. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. The attribute is water. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That wetness is water itself. That wetness is water. You can't separate two. the two. Mm. Thank you. God is power. 
God is knowledge. Hmm. Receiving him is receiving what he know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> When you dissect God, you open him up and you begin to study him. Mm-hmm. You get to know what he knows. You get to see what he sees. Mm. You inherit an understanding from him. Just by working on him. You don't need to visit everything that he created. Visit the creator. Mm-hmm. Comprehend him. That becomes your comprehension of his creation. Mm. Hey. You, you begin to operate at a level that will even amaze you. How come? How did I? How did I? You will act, you will act so weak and yet you are so powerful. If you notice that every movie that you've watched of even the superman mm-hmm. is wearing glasses. <laughs> yes. And yet he has an ability to see through walls. Mm. <laughs> I saw him looking at this beautiful girl mm. as she walks away. And as she closed the door behind he kept on looking at her. And she went and she got into an elevator as she goes up. Superman kept on looking at her. Yet he was putting on glasses. Yeah. It's a disguise. Mm. You will act weak and yet within you lies the power of God. God allows people around you to see weaknesses and they insult you. Mm. They criticize you. Mm. They attack you. Mm-hmm. These are spectacles that God has put on you mm. to camouflage mm. the mm. divine abilities that you carry. Wow. Why they are deceived? They are deceived. so that you are also not received everywhere you go mm. you seem to be struggling but the power in you is not struggling mm. you seem to be so small and yet the power within you is huge it's massive energy that you carry you can do exploits it's not something that you are going to eventually receive no it's something that you have to eventually discover It's a discovery. It's simply a realization of what God has already given. When he came, he did not leave anything outside. Mm, mm, mm. And yet it's not much that you can see today coming out of you. Why? You have not been working tirelessly on yourself. All right. So that your discharge can become bigger. you are discharging the god that you have received mm-hmm. so to, from today this is something that needs to be recorded in your mind whenever you hear of the gifts of god those are the attributes mm-hmm. of god everyone that is gifted i will start from the next time any gift that you thought was not of the spirit is of the spirit and every gift that you thought was not spiritual is spiritual mm. no matter how physical the gift is mm. whether you are made to run i don't know how many miles a minute mm. how many miles an hour mm. that ability in its nature is the gift of the spirit mm. you swim faster by the spirit hey. <laughs> you jump higher by the spirit mm. not only speaking in tongues every gifted mm-hmm. creature mm-hmm. has a gift of the spirit and that gift is spiritual mm. no matter how physical you execute it mm. 
It's not only when you lay, lay hands on the sick and they recover and you think that's the gift. Every gifted man mm-hmm. is gifted by the Spirit. And that gift is spiritual. No matter how physical. Wow. You have to understand how that gift is maintained. Every gift is spiritual. And every gift that you have, you got it from God. But the issue is how many of those are effective now? So I want our viewers now to really take advantage of this knowledge that I have given you. Start to work on yourself so that next time you appear, your appearance becomes the appearance of something that you are. What people have been waiting for, they must pray until you arrive. Mm. Your arrival becomes an answer Mm. to their prayer. They should not Seek for God Mm. in your presence. Mm. If your presence is a direct resemblance of the presence of God, Mm. it must be said a prophet has risen from among us. It must be confirmed that God has visited his people simply by your coming. Put value on your presence. Wherever you go, God goes. When you turn your back on the city, when you ignore an individual, he has just been ignored by God. Mm -hmm. And if they are to cry and to ask God for forgiveness and God says, I'm coming back, that itinerary will be given to you. It will have to be you visiting that same place. And you become the Lord's visitation to those people. That's the level of value that you carry and that you are. Start to work on the attributes of God. Love is an attribute of God. How much of it do you have? Improve on it. Multiply it as it grows. That becomes the growth of the gift of the Spirit that you have received. Your understanding of God becomes your understanding of what He gives. Choose Him. Remember, Joseph comes and Joseph was like the picture of Christ. Mm -hmm. And when he came to shake him, looking for his brothers, Mm. his father had given him what to carry. So Joseph being a gift to the father, Jesus being a gift Mm -hmm. to the world, Mm Still, the father had to give ministries <laughs> to Jesus. Oh, wow. To make apostles, pastors, teachers, evangelists. Joseph being a gift, for God so loved the, the world, world. Mm. that he gave Jesus, he gave Joseph. Mm. But when Joseph arrived, his brothers saw him and they said, let us kill him mm-hmm. so that we see mm. what would become of his dream. What was Jesus' dream? Becoming the Lord. That was Jesus' dream. Mm. And in trying to kill that dream, they killed him. Mm. Let's cast him into the pit. Mm. Mm. That's how Jesus was destroyed by mankind. But soon after that, what did they do? Mm -hmm. They took his luggage. (laughs) <laughs> they took his bread. Oh. They took his gifts mm. and rejected him. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So all the billionaires that you know oh, wow. that are not born again, mm. it was Jesus they cast away and his bread that they took, his groceries, his packages, his gifts. They are all gifted by God, yet not born again. It doesn't matter you don't believe in God, but you believe in what is of God. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter you say, I don't want to receive him, but you have received from him. Everyone that I know who is gifted, who, who seems not to know God, mm-hmm. has received from God. Mm-hmm. Wow. All they did was to, the Bible says, when they had cast him into the pit, yes. they sat down and they ate the bread. Mm-hmm. This goes to show that in as much as people are not interested in God, Yes. They're interested in what he brings. Mm. But those of us that are born again, we have received the presence of Joseph. Yes. And after that, we have received from him. Yes. Mm. So we are gifted and the giver of the gifts is present with us. Wow. Child of God, you need to be born again. You need to be born again. This is the answer. This is what will grant you access into the realms of the kingdom of God. If you're not born again, be born again. You have to be born again. You have to receive God now, who has always been in you, but not active. Receive him tonight and be born again. You open your mouth and you confess that you are Lord and you are my savior. You are my savior. And you have forgiven me. And you have forgiven me. And you have made me new. And you have made me. And for that I thank you. And for that I thank you. And for that I will worship you forever. And for that I will worship you forever. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Child of God, you are blessed. You are healed. Until we meet again. Stay in the love of the Lord. And I love you so much. And have a good night.